hello again, you're watching Everard Junction and today, a slightly different video, I've uh, received a new arrival for the layout and I thought I would show you absolutely everything that I do um, to get a loco ready for the layout. So decoder, couplings, running in, the lot, because I get various questions about all those things. So let's go from start to finish. So as you can see, this is a new Class 50 locomotive, specifically 50046. This was the last 50 to carry the uh, large logo livery while still in service with British Rail. And this particular example managed to stay in service until 1992, when it was eventually withdrawn and scrapped from service. This will bring my fleet of 50s up to a total of three and will be a nice complement to my two Network Southeast liveried examples as I do not currently own many locomotives in the large logo colour scheme. So the first thing I always do is before we even get close to the layout is to get it out and to have a real good look at it and check it's okay, check for blemishes, bits that are missing, possible damage in transit, anything like that. You'd be surprised what can happen. So there it is, just give it a quick check over, any issues with the paint, any glue marks, bits that might have fallen off, because after all it is very, very well detailed and there's a lot that can be broken if you're careless. Okay, overall, it seems pretty good. Only thing we've got is a wonky buffer, which I can fix in a moment. Okay, so now the buffer is sorted. Uh, I've noticed there's one slight error, uh, which is easily solved, and I think it's just a result of the way the loco is painted. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're printed in the factory, so basically a big pad with all the paint on it just goes poof, and puts it on the side, so um, you're not going to be able to get into this specific area, I've noticed. You'll notice the black around the windows on the side. If you look into the window and you see the edge there, you can see it's yellow on the inside. That's because the printer that puts the black paint on can't get in there. Um, but in reality, it was black in there because you would have had the window seal and uh, the black paint would have, would have gone all the way around. So that just needs a slight correction with a very small paintbrush and a steady hand. It's like that on all four windows. It's only a very, very, very minor problem. Apart from that, I can't see anything else wrong with it. Next thing to do is to put a decoder in it. A quick look in the manual um, shows that it hasn't changed. It's uh, still exactly the same to remove the body. There are four clips and the whole lot should lift off. But you have to make sure you disconnect this little cable down there. Otherwise, uh, you could uh, you could break that. Um, it's not glued in, so it'll just pop out of the little lugs there, and then you can lift the body off. Okay, you just get under this edge, and you just pull out with your finger, and just try and lift it slightly, which uh, should release it from the clips, which I've done. And then, just very gently, you should be able to tease the whole body. is certainly on much more firmly than previous releases. 
it is quite a snug fit so you have to be very careful and there you go okay so now we're inside I'll take a look at some of the changes that have been made on this newest release and uh, some of the things that you should check the first thing that's uh, changed is they have completely removed the uh, operating fan mechanism which is absolutely fine in my book because it gave me trouble with pretty much every other locomotive I ever bought that had this mechanism just um, although it worked the, um, the loco just didn't seem to run quite as smoothly um, as it could do and I found that uh, disconnecting the drive belt which drove the system off of that cam there by disconnecting that and getting rid of it um, the loco did run better and that was true on both my class 56s both my class 50s and my class 31 next change we have is a redesigned circuit board this is completely different to the ones that uh, you usually see in the older release uh, we've got a, uh, a more simple um, decoder socket um, previously um, it was an 8 pin and then there was like a 4 next to it for whatever reason I don't know um, other changes include uh, the addition of these two connectors here uh, which I believe is for the pickups and the lighting um, just plugs in which is nice previously that was all um, well it wasn't even soldered actually you had these little lugs on the edge of the circuit board and the cable just wrapped over the lug and there was a little plastic cap that just pushed over it and uh, that was how it uh, worked so it was simple but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't particularly reliable it could give you trouble Apart from that, everything else is basically the same. Got the same uh, same chassis block. You got the same lighting arrangement here, with the uh, little lugs on the back that will uh, connect to the backs of the cabs. You can see in there. There you go. Two contacts there. That runs the marker lights up the top. So that's all unchanged. Standard class 50. Next thing I do, particularly on Hornby models, is check the quality of the soldering that is down on these little pickups here uh, it's that lug there it is connected to a piece of metal that runs the whole length of the bogey and it gets power from the wheels the power then goes into that lug and goes up into that little very very thigh, very fine cable that uh, has, to, uh, has to swivel um, I've had those come off previously so it's worth just having a quick look and just checking that they are soldered neatly and they're not just hanging on by a thread. They all look good. Um, I would also have checked the tangs that were on the edge here, uh, but we've got the new connector, so that should be fine. Um, there is a soldered connection there and there at both ends, but that looks fine. So, uh, so far, so good. If you've bought a model that's been sitting in the shops for a very long time, it would be worth lubricating it at this point. On the 50, you add a tiny bit of oil into the worm gear there. Same at the other end. And then uh, you can also lubricate the axles as well. This is a brand new release. It's only just come into stock, so it's all freshly lubricated from the factory when it was made. So no problems there. So the next thing that I'm going to do is put a decoder in it and check that the model works. So uh, remove the 8 pin plug and take an 8 pin decoder of your choice. I'm using a Backman 8 pin decoder and I find these to be quite reliable for my 8 pin locos. Um, they're not super fancy but they, they seem to do a pretty good job. Um, pin 1 is labelled on the PCB and that is the orange cable on the decoder. Make sure the pins are definitely lined up and then just push it home. Next thing to do is to find somewhere to put it so it's not just flapping around all over the place. Um, on the 50s I tend to use this end so uh, a little bit of sellotape is all you need. And that'll do. That'll be fine. Okay, now I'm going to go and check that it works. 
and I do that before I put the body on because if there is anything wrong I can troubleshoot it straight away and don't have to potentially damage the body trying to take it off again. Okay so here we are on the track default address for a loco with a brand new decoder in it is number three so I'm selected on loco number three so if I turn on the lights you can see that the headlight is working I change direction the tail light is working make sure that's also working on the other end which it is that's okay so let's see if it works change direction that's fine that's proof that it's going to work so I can carry on put everything back on it and then run it in okay before I put the body back on I'm gonna put the accessories on one end so it's all nice and realistic looking and then I'll put a coupler on the other end it's easier to do that with the body off you can handle the model much more easily and access to the front buffer beam is generally easier and a bit better with the body off okay so in the bag of accessories we've got all the various um, air hoses and connectors to go on the front and you can see they're different colors and uh, in the instructions that come with the model we can see that they are black and white brilliant that is really useful fantastic all the manufacturers do that and I uh, every single time I go to put the accessories on the front of a loco I do it from prototype pictures because that doesn't really tell you very much so if you go onto Google and type in class and then the running number of your locomotive you will get loads of pictures of it both the real thing and in model form find a picture that shows the front end of it in reasonable quality and use that as a guide for putting detail on the front so there you go that's a picture from Wikipedia gives me perfect guide for where everything goes okay going on quite nicely actually these are some of the easiest to fit ones I've ever had um, usually what you get is the hole in the buffer beam is not quite big enough to take the piece of detail um, and you can wrestle with tweezers and all kinds trying to get them in there um, but all of these have just slotted straight in which is great so uh, nice and easy I'm using Rocket Max super glue to hold them in and because they've gone right way through the holes they should never break off they should be fine so uh, nice and easy uh, one thing I'm missing um, from the pack of detail is uh, this hose that, that, uh, that little hose in the middle there uh, for whatever reason it's not in the bag um, but never mind um, I always keep all this kind of stuff in a little box because um, you never know when you might need it this stuff can break off and it does fall off from site from time to time um, whenever I get a loco if I do detail it I usually only do one end of it so I'm left with a, a load of extra little bits of detail to go on the other end that I haven't used so I always put those in a pot and then if anything ever breaks off or I'm missing something or I need a part I can usually find it so uh, I'll have a rummage and see if I've got one luckily I seem to have plenty of those so for Backman class 47 and hopefully it'll just go straight on that fitted on there no problem at all so now the detail is done I can fit a coupler and uh, put the body back on most of you will fit the supplied tension lock coupling um, but as most of you know on my layout I uh, use KD couplers it's a personal preference I find uh, they just look a bit better but ultimately they are more reliable and cause less derailments which is why I use them uh, when I have a new loco I typically fit a number 19 they do various different sizes the smaller the number the shorter the coupler so the, the less distance it's going to stick out the front the shorter the, dis the, shorter the distance um, the better the loco will look um, but you will reduce its ability to pull anything around tight corners um, I find the number 19 is a good compromise and if I find the gap between the loco and my coaches or wagons is too great then I will 
swap out the 19 for a, a shorter version, so say an 18 or a 17, and vice versa. If I have problems going around corners with a 19, then I'll buy a 20 and see how that goes. So there's a lot of choice. Um, these are the NEM type KD, so they just click into the NEM coupling pocket that's already supplied to the model. So they are just as easy to put on as these are. Okay, uh, this end of the model has a dummy scale coupler fitted to it. Um, I've just pulled that off as per the instructions. So now I can put in the coupler into the NEM pocket. So you can see the NEM pocket is there that allows the coupling to swivel around curves. So I just take my uh, NEM KD, just give it a gentle push, you start going in and then push it all the way until it clicks in there. There you go, done. Okay, so now being careful to make sure that these orange cables are out of the way, you can uh, place the body back on top and then just gently push it down until those four plastic clips click in. So there we go, detail and couplers are fitted, it's now ready to be run in. Okay, so now it's time to run the loco in, and uh, I tend to uh, run them in uh, for about half an hour in each direction, and that seems to, seems to do a perfectly good job of bedding the mechanism in. I'll leave it running for half an hour in that direction and I'll come back and send it the other way. Leave it running at uh, sort of medium speed, not too slow but not too fast either. Okay, so uh, it's had half an hour in both directions. It's now uh, fully run in. It seems to be running nice and smoothly. But it needs programming because when you stop it, it just sort of stops instantly. It'd be nice if it slowed down gradually like a real engine. Okay, so here we are on the programming track, which is a separate piece of track with a separate power feed from the controller that is used only for programming locomotives decoders. Okay, so I'm going to go into uh, the program mode. And I'm going to want to adjust the CVs in the decoder, which is all of the individual settings and parameters for the decoder's behaviour. So I go into CV, it's now asking which ones I want to change. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is CV number 1, which is the locomotive's address. Now at the moment it's number 3, now I want to change it to number 34. So press 34, press enter, and that's now programmed to the class 50. So now, next one I'm going to do is the acceleration which I believe is number three. 
and basically the higher the number the slower the loco will accelerate uh, so if I press enter I can ask the loco what it's set to and at the moment it's set to 8 so that's why it goes really quickly off the line so if we go back go to number 3 I'm going to change it to 63 that's the highest number that this particular decoder will support so we'll program that I'm going to go back and for CV number 4 which is the, basically the braking or the deceleration again I'm going to set it to the highest number Something else I need to do um, while the loco is on the track is uh, change the number of speed steps. Um, I want to change the speed steps to 128, um, but at the moment it's not set to that. It will be set to uh, the default setting, which I think is 28, um, which means the loco moves very jerkily between the different speeds. So, like speed one is quite sort of slow and then speed 2 is a noticeable jump faster so we want to smooth that out and by doing that you you assign the loco to have the maximum number of available speed steps so on the lens to do that go into the function menu and I want set F go into that I believe you press number 2 which gives you the speed steps so at the moment that decoder is only using 28 available speed steps I want to use 128 press enter, that's now been confirmed so if I was to accelerate the loco now you can see we can go all the way up so that's a basic setup for the decoder just to get the loco to run a little bit more smoothly as you can see now responds a little bit more like a real locomotive would do there's various other CVs that you can play around with um, some of the other ones I adjust is CV54 and I also sometimes play with CV5 just to get the uh, loco to run that a little bit better. So uh, it's now running nice and smoothly. You can see how slowly it accelerates. I've told it to go up to speed 48, which is a reasonable pace, but it's doing it on its own terms and doing it gradually. So that's everything I do to prepare a loco uh, to join the fleet on the layout. Um, the next thing that we'll need is a nice weathering as per the prototype and that will be done after the model has accomplished a number of running hours without any issues and uh, once, it's, you know, once it's proven to me anyway that it's going to be reliable and then uh, I will weather it completely.